Yo, 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 it's True For Tuesday. Woo, 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 woo. Can I just say, my beard looks on point today after using some great products from the body shop. Yes, the body shop. But it's really um, trimming today. Anyway, enough about me. It's all about you, as I say. And today, it is all about True For Tuesday. And the topic, it's a great topic. It's a great, great, great topic. It's called Act Versus react let me say that again so you sinks in it's all about act versus react think about your personality at the moment think about what you are like as a person do we act or do you react do you act as a deliberate choice do you think do you do things that are deliberate or you do you react based on emotions and i've got a great sentence here is your behavior affecting your fat loss is your behavior affecting your fat loss is the way you act helping you or is the way you react hindering you but nathan what do you mean i hear you say that through the zoom video i hear you say that so what do i mean most of the time when we're on a program of trying to better ourselves we are acting deliberate we are doing things to make ourselves better. When we are becoming overweight, when we are doing things negative, we are reacting. So for instance, and I'll give you a great example, emotional eating. I was an emotional eater. And when I was happy, sad, joyful, um, angry, I eat food. And I still do it now. And I have to be so mindful of how I feel to how I react to how I feel. So if something, if something stresses me out, I always used to, well, I used to react by eating food, which then made me get fatter and fatter. And when I was 27 stone, let's just say I did a lot of reacting, a lot of reacting to food. And so my reaction made me eat food. I became emotional, I reacted by eating food. When I lost weight and when I did my first bodybuilding show, and now I make sure I am in control by making deliberate choices to act and make myself a healthier person. So let me give you some examples. How do you deliberately act, deliberately act to keep in control of your fat loss? You plan and train ahead. So a lot of my clients who are in my 1% method, we schedule and plan ahead. We create habits. We make sure your food focus fusion plans are in control. You are in control of your food. You are in control of your eating. How do you react in a negative way? When you have no schedule, when you don't know what you're eating, when you have no plan, you'll reach for whatever is in the cupboard. When you're out and about, you'll reach for whatever you, wherever you are. Let's say you're on the go all the time in your car. Most people that don't have a plan, that don't prepare their food, they go to a garage and eat rubbish from the garage. Or if you go to a restaurant, most of my clients look what's on the menu. And so they act in deliberately to make a choice. When you react, you're there, it suddenly happens, you're based on how you feel, and you order something that you wish you don't really need. So we are always making sure, in regards to fat loss, we are making a del deliberate choice to train and plan ahead. We also make decisions based on facts. When you're acting ahead in your fat loss, you make a decision based on facts. What you do not do is when you react, you make a decision based on emotions. So for instance, again, coming back to emotional eating, when I emotionally ate, I ate because of my emotions, because of how I felt. When you act and make a deliberate choice, you actually say to yourself, am I hungry? Yes or no, simple. But when you're an emotional eater, you react by emotionally eating based on how you feel, not if you actually are hungry or not, but if you're happy and sad, which is what gets a lot of people and their behavior into a mess when it comes to fat loss. Sometimes when we're having a bad day, we need to pause and breathe. We need to act by pausing and breathing and understanding what do I need to do next? I had a great conversation last night on the way home from the gym and um, one of my clients had a bit of a stressful week. And I said to her, when you come back from work, you just need to have 10 minutes 
to be mindful of your day, to brush things off, pause and breathe. How many of us actually do that? How many of us sit down in a mindful state and pause and breathe? Most of the time, we get back, something happens, there's an erratic response, and we react again based on our emotions. We do an erratic response. I remember, and this is quite funny, I remember, so my mom used to say to me when I was younger, you wait till your dad gets home. And when my dad got home, he'd been at work all day, doing whatever he did, and he'd come back quite tightly wound up or quite het up. And so when my mom said, they've done this, they've done that, my dad would then react from how he'd, uh, how he'd been through that day, which most of the time was he'd been wound up. So he'd do he reactions to us by shouting at us, by being negative to us because of the way the day had been. And that's the same with ourselves. If you've had a bad day, when we come back home and we have a letter and it's a, a speeding ticket, because if you've had a bad day, we respond erratic. Whereas if we just come home, have a pause and a breathe, think about our day that we've had and then act. We are in control. So guys, when it comes to fat loss, when you wake up in the morning, when you come home at night, are you acting about what you're going to do? Are you have a brief, have a brief, pause and breathe and think about what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? Do not do some erratic response. How many of us consider the consequences? Just in general, how many of us consider the consequences in how we act? Because if we did, half the stuff we wouldn't do. If we actually thought about the consequences and considered what happens if I do A and B, do I get the C or do I get Z? How many of us actually think about it? Most of the time, because we react on our emotions, we just deal with the consequences after. We do, an, uh, we do a reaction and then we deal with it after. We do a reaction, we deal with the consequences after. And then that leads us into a negative state. What about if we just did an act and thought about the consequences and reacted on that instead? So we act, consider the consequences, think about it, do I need to do it? No, I don't. Coming back to food, let's think of it from a fat loss point of view. You're craving biscuits, you're craving sugary stuff. You actually reach for the 10 cow jelly that's going to crave, that's going to get rid of those cravings. You thought about it, I'm going to go for the 10k jelly. Consider if you hadn't gone for the 10k jelly, you've gone for the biscuits, how you would have felt after. That's considering the consequences. And I always say to my, um, my clients, pause, breathe, think about how you're going to feel after you bet the shit. Are you going to feel better or worse? Or are you going to feel good if you go for the healthier option? And most of the time, they go for the healthier option. How, if you react to things about how you feel, you'll do it, you'll think about the consequences after and feel quite down and depressed and unhappy with how you've dealt with certain situations. And then, acting act in, in a deliberate choice, you develop hindsight. We should always be learning from situations and scenarios. And when we learn from that, we should be adapting it for when we move forward in life. So if you know certain situations have caught you off guard regarding fat loss, develop hindsight, understand it, what went wrong, move on so it doesn't happen again. Most of the time, when we react to things, we don't learn from it and we do it repeatedly over and over and over again. Guys, when it comes to fat loss, if you base everything on reactions, your fat loss journey will be a hill up and down, up and down, up and down, because you're basing your reactions on emotional feelings. You need to start basing your fat loss journey on actions that are a deliberate choice. And guys, here on your actionated side, I've put things, I say actionated because I think it's a great word, even though it's not a word, I'm gonna say it. You need to think of things, how to act on your fat loss. You need to have a plan. You need to make decisions based on facts. You need to have a, a system where you pause and breathe and think about the consequences after. Okay, think about what's going to happen if I do X and Y. Am I going to get Z or am I going to get a mashed up situation where I'm in a, that I'm in a dire strait I'm really unhappy with? And then you have to develop hindsight. If you've done an action that hasn't paid off, learn from it, move on so it doesn't happen again. If you base things on a reaction that's based on emotions, 
you'll have no schedule, so you get caught off guard. You'll make decisions based on how you emotionally feel, which is not the best at all. You'll make erratic responses. You'll deal with consequences after, which puts you in a negative state, and you won't learn from your mistakes, and you'll keep repeating them time after time after time again. What I do my 1% method, guys, we act, okay? We take action. We are always thinking ahead and taking action. We make deliberate choices to get deliberate results. What we don't do is react on emotions because emotions will make you fail. We are all emotional beings. We always have ups and downs, ups and downs, and that's not consistent. If you become, if you make things consistent, i.e. in action, that becomes consistent repeatedly over time, you get results. So my one bit of tip to you guys, if you're on a fat loss journey and you're trying to do it by yourself, use, a, a, act on a deliberate choice. Make a deliberate choice. Make an action. Do not base yourself on reactions because you will get yourself in trouble and you will come off your fat loss journey. I'm Nathan Ross and here on our Truthful Tuesday, you decide whether you act or react to your fat loss journey.